Every day of my life begins pretty much the same way, with a cup of coffee. Beautiful, delicious, rich, tender. Sorry, I just really like coffee. And so when I found out that I'd be visiting a coffee farm here in Guatemala and learning a bit more about the process of how coffee's made, I was excited. But you know what? What I found on that day was something maybe even more important than coffee. Let me explain. Oh yeah, that is why my head hurts. Anyway, it's a new beginning. It's day two. So I'm gonna put some sunglasses on these sleepy eyes and we're gonna go have an adventure. And thankfully, we're going to some place that's very good for sleepy eyes. We're going to a coffee plantation. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. Hello, Francisco. Hello. Coffee and a camera. Francisco. Hello, where are you? Good morning. You're How videoing are you? me, I'm videoing you. No, I'm just kidding. How are you, Luis? Bien, and you? Muy bien. How are you? Daniel. Daniel. Sí. Mucho gusto, Daniel. Sí. Uh, yo tengo un canal de YouTube. Un canal de YouTube. Sí, sí, sí. ¿Sí? Me gusta la ciudad de Guatemala. Sí, esta zona es muy bonita. ¿Te es, gusta también? Esta zona. Sí, por sí, sí. Por los hoteles, sí. comercios. Por eso es que es, y es muy... Otra zona es muy diferente. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. As we left Zone 10 and headed for the outskirts of the city, I thought of the driver's words about how other zones could be different. And as I lifted my hungover head and watched the city float by, I wondered to myself what adventures awaited us, where we were going. So we just switched out of the shuttle van because uh, we're going to be going down a dirt road to this coffee farm. And we got these four by four vehicles. And most people are sitting inside, but I decided. Uh, why not partake in the famous Guatemalan experience of sitting or standing in the back of a truck? Whoa! <laughs> Something that is definitely not legal where I come from in Canada. But in Guatemala, you see it all the time. You'll sometimes see 10 or 12 workers, two in the front, 10 in the back. You get by however you can. If you got somewhere to go, you go. <laughs> and right now I'm getting experience of uh, a face full of dust from this dusty road we're driving down. <laughs> I didn't consider this when I chose to sit in the back. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you appreciate me uh, swallowing a fistful of dust <laughs> to make this video. Bienvenidos. I mean, welcome. Well, I missed breakfast, but I got a meal of dust on that ride there. That was very nice. So, uh, we are a coffee family, and we are a coffee farm too, and I will be a coffee tour to you. Sorry because my English is not it's very perfect. well. But perfect. I will no be problem. my very good. Bueno. Uh, he's my sister, he's Ruth. Hi. And, and he is my Hello. brother, Emilio. Yeah. We, I have uh, 24 years. He have? Uh, 21. He have. Okay. Uh, 12. And he, and he <laughs> have 12. We all do. <laughs> yeah. so cute. Uh, they're very, very tall. We began by taking a little tour of the property. And it was kind of like a coffee safari. 
Like we drove around in these vehicles, we saw these different types of coffee, we learned a bit about the process of how it was actually going from the tree to the roasters, to the bags, to wherever they shipped them off to. And we collect the coffee when the coffee turned like this, red, like this color. Ah. The coffee is start to, to be uh, red and the, all the coffee is red in December. We collect in January to March. I just want to say thank you for all the endless hours of energy you've given me over the years. I never would have made it without you. Same. I love you guys. The coffee ninos, as you put it, Brian. Again? Yeah. The coffee ninos. Coffee yes, ninos. We love them. And after we had seen the different uh, fields of like the endless coffee that they were growing up there and the, just the size of this property, like they had a fish pond, they had a second home that they were building for visitors to the property. I mean, this place was huge. After all that, we got to visit the family house. And it was there in the Reyes Mendez family house that uh, I started to think, okay, this family, like, they're obviously rich. You know, this, this must be like an old money Guatemalan family or something. Yeah, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying, like, these guys, they have this beautiful property, this thriving business. Uh, their father, by the way, this guy <laughs> is the mayor of this community. That's why he's not in the video. He's, he's literally the mayor of Palencia, this town. In addition to running this household where, you know, they have a thriving coffee business and all that. Um, but yeah, I was thinking to myself, like, obviously this family has money. They're doing something right. But it was as we were entering into the home, we were about to have a lunch, which Shaul's mom was cooking for us, a homemade lunch. Uh, but before that, he stopped by this old cabinet full of, I don't know, like dusty old tools. And he was saying to the group, uh, excuse me, th like, there's one more thing I want to show you. Uh, and everyone was like, just looking around this beautiful house, like, oh, wow, look at all this stuff. But Saul was like, no, like, please, please, everyone, listen, I have something to show you. And then he told the story of how these tools in this cabinet belonged to his father. And they were the tools from his father's first carpenter job, where he worked as a carpenter for about a dollar a day. So they weren't a family that came from wealth. They were a family that came from humble beginnings and worked their way up from there. And his father keeps that cabinet in the living room to remind himself and his family of where they came from. My dad walked walk with no shoes. My grandmother doesn't write and doesn't, and doesn't read because he's very, she's very poverty. Well, my dad worked a lot. For well, this. you yeah. must be very proud to see what, yeah. what has come. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but we'll never forget, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll never forget yeah. where you come. Wow. Yeah. And that to me was a very powerful moment. It just shows you the power of belief and the power of working together as a family. You know, every Sunday, Salah was saying they all sit together as a family and they go over their tasks for the week. What individual piece each of them is gonna do, what project they're gonna work on, how they are going to move forward together. It was after that that we sat down for lunch. We had a homemade meal cooked by Sal's mother. She made us uh, chicken soup with rice and uh, vegetables and these amazing fresh, warm tortillas. And of course, we wash it all down with the cups of coffee. Uh, <laughs> but this isn't an ad for their coffee or anything. Like, uh, this isn't really about the coffee. This is about the family. It's that sense of family that makes that coffee possible. You know, I jokingly said at the beginning, like, you know, family might be even more important than coffee. Well, in a sense, it's the family that leads to the coffee. It's the family that makes it all possible. And as we sat there at that table, eating that homemade meal, I felt like part of the family. We all did. And I've had that experience over and over and over in Guatemala. 
almost everywhere you go, people want you to see the best in their country. They want to welcome you to this land. They know that there's some negative perceptions about Guatemala. They know that sometimes the news media doesn't treat Latin America with the respect that it deserves. They treat it like a place that people are trying to escape. But one truth that always remains, one truth I always come back to, whether I'm in Mexico or Guatemala or Costa Rica or any of these places, is they have something that is very beautiful in the way people treat each other like family and treat strangers like family. I have a friend in Canada. In Canada? But uh, he is in Kodgua. Ottawa? Adgua. Uh-huh. Ottawa? Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, capital to ah, Canada. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. Is. <laughs> Have you yeah. been to Canada? No, no, no. No, no, no. I want. You want to go? Yeah, I want. I want. What, what do you think about Canada? I, I think it's a very good place and very good people, too. What's it guys say? That's how it is in Guatemala. You are constantly being reminded that you are welcome here. And the sad part is... As our driver, Luis, alluded to earlier, yes, there is a danger. Like, you, you need to remember the family, but you also need to, like, be aware that uh, crime statistics here are very high. There are some zones. It's not recommended to go as a tourist, as a foreigner. But sometimes that's all we think about. Sometimes we skip places like Guatemala City because we only hear about those. We only hear about the crime and the violence and the people who got robbed and like we, we only focus on that. But what's the other side of the coin? What's the other side that we are missing? To me it's that sense of family and that beautiful connection you have with people who see you visiting their city and want you to have a good experience, want you to be part of the family in whatever way they can. Sometimes it's a home-cooked meal Sometimes it's just a, you know, a smile and a buenas tardes and uh, like todo bien, like they just ask you like, are you everything good? You know, just, just checking in, making sure everything's okay. Sometimes it's the YouTube comments I get down below of all the people saying, hey, like if you need anything, let me know. I'm, you're in my city, how can I help you? Uh, here's a list of places you should visit. That's the Guatemalan way. And uh, it's one of the reasons I'm really enjoying my time in this country. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know what family means to you. Let me know if you have sensed what I've been talking about in this video. <laughs> but yeah, I got some really exciting stuff coming up. We're going to Lake Atitlan, one of the most beautiful places I've been in my life. That'll be coming up soon. So uh, definitely check out the whole Guatemala series. If you want more insights and more images from this beautiful country. My coffee went cold. I talked too much. But my heart is still warm, thanks to family. Oh, you see how I connected the dots right at the end. Okay, that was kind of corny, wasn't it? <laughs> I should stop talking. Okay, everyone, I'm Dan from The New Travel. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time. Peace.